clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Most holy and everlasting Father, Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come before you, my Father, we'll bow down heads and humble hearts. Thank you, Lord, for last night's sleep and our early rising this morning. Lord, we also want to thank you for a day we've never seen before, Lord. We thank you for the food we have on our table. And you gave us the ability to put on our own clothes this morning. We just want to say thank you. And most of all, Lord, we want to say thank you for your son, Jesus, you sent down for 40 and two generations to die for our sins, Lord. And right now, Father, we ask you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, to bless each and every one of us, Father, in the blessing seats we stand in need of. Lord, we need you for one thing, some need you for another, Lord. We ask you, Father, to bless those that are going through bereavement. Comfort them, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help them to realize earth has no sorrow. Help it cannot heal. We ask you, Lord, to bless those that are behind prison walls to hear your holy words behind those prison walls. And bless those that are sick and shut in, Father. Lord, bless our governmental leaders to realize, Father, that they must work together, Lord, from the local to the federal level. Help them to realize that without you, they can do nothing, Lord. We ask you, Father, to bless this church service this morning. Bless the man of God that he brings forth your holy word under the anointing and power of the Holy Ghost, Father. Heavenly Father, bless the devotional leaders to sing under your anointing and worship praise under your anointing and power of the Holy Ghost, Father. Lord Jesus, we need you. We can't make it without you, Lord. We have a pandemic still going on, Father. Protect us, Father, from this pandemic, Lord. Cover us with your precious blood, Father, because we know that it's healing in your name, Jesus. Salvation is in your name, Jesus. And, Lord, once again, we want to thank you, Father, for everything you are doing for us right now, Father. Lord, we ask you to just bless this church service, Father. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sunshine all the way. 
It tells of one who loving heart can feel my deepest wound, who in each sorrow bear a part that none can bear below. We have our scripture. shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. I have read to you verses 1 through 5. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Our hymn, Oh How I Love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in my ear the sweetest name on earth. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, Tell me of a Savior love who died to set me free. It tell me of his precious blood, the sinner perfect plea. It tells me of a sinner's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tell me what my father had in store for every day. And though I tread a Dawson pass, ye sunshine all the way. It tells me what my father's had in store for every day. And though I tread a Dawson pass, ye sunshine all the way. Stances, will you please stand? It's a, it tells of who it tells of one who loving heart can feel my deepest wound, who in each sorrow bear a part that none can bear below. It tells a one whose loving heart can feel my deepest wound, who in each sorrow bears a that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. We have a prayer by Sister Frazier.
bless you enough. And I would like to ask you, Lord, to have mercy on all of us, yes. on me, my family, my church family, yes. and bless our family, bless yes. our church family. Lead us in the way you want us to go. Guide us. Show us and let us be obedient yes. when you show us the way that oh, we yes. should go. Lord, I ask you to forgive us of all of our sins. Yes. Lord, I want to say thank you for the rain last yes, night. Thank you. thank you for the sunshine today. Thanks, Lord. And Lord, we know without you, we are unable to do anything. Oh, yes. We would not be able to move. We would not be able to walk, talk, because you are our Savior. Yes. And Lord, again, I want you to bless our pastor and his family yes, and Lord. all of our members and my family yes. and all the families here collectively Lord, when we have done and yes. do all that you assign us to do, give us a place somewhere in your kingdom oh, yes. where we can carry on your name and bless you and rest. In yes. Jesus' name, oh, yes. amen. amen. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. Oh, if you want your body healed, tell him what you want. If you want your body healed, tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. If you want your sin forgiven, tell him what you want. Oh, if you want your sin forgiven, tell him what you want. If you want your sin forgiven, tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want.
remember them days. We, we, we'd be happy a little rain come through and run a little creek water through the ditch and catch you a little crawfish. You get an old can and put some fire. Come on, somebody. Mom be telling me, where you going with that salt and pepper? <laughs> Trying to put a little seasoning in the water. God is a good God. He has brought us a long way. When I think about our lives and the humble beginnings that we come from, um, the, 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 the party line on the phone. Come on, somebody. You, you couldn't talk on the phone by yourself. Or, or you, had to, you had to respect other people. You had to be considerate, thank you, Holy Ghost, of other people and let them talk for a little while. And then you had to show some discipline. It wasn't this stuff of walking around all day, just you and whoever you want to talk to. You were part of a community. And so you had, had to share the line. And, and, and so this morning, I want you to turn with me to the book of Philippians. I'm going to do a series. I'm going to do a series from the book of Philippians starting today. We're going to start this series today going to call it this joy that I have. This joy that I have. That's what we're going to call the series. And uh, we're going to begin with Paul talking to us in the first chapter of Philippians. I think I'll just take on Proverbs first six verses this morning. It is so good to see you all. Amen. I don't take it for granted anymore. I look, I look at you for a while. I, I take it in what you bring to God's family. All of us have assets for God's family. All of us have purpose for the kingdom of God. God has been talking to me this week about how do you lead people into their purpose? How do you lead people into their destiny in the kingdom of God? Without making it so complicated and complex, but in the simplicity and the humbleness of Jesus Christ. You remember when Jesus was in the temple and he began to do some things. They, they wanted to bring him back to who his daddy was and said, isn't this the carpenter's son? Yeah, you are that. You are who your mama and daddy were and who they made you to be. But God, come on somebody, also put some things in you that when the time arises and the Holy Spirit moves upon you to speak, to pray, to, 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 to mourn, to lift others up in hope. He's put that in us. Those things are priceless. You can't pay for those things. And, and so the gift that God has given us and has given us, they're priceless. And we have to use them. Amen. For the Upbuilding, isn't that what we say when we, when we get our ties and all for the upbuilding of the kingdom? That's what they mean. They don't mean a physical upbuilding. But in those areas that are behind the scenes, those, what do they call those, intangibles, right? Those intangibles, those things you can't even see. But somewhere you can feel that God is leading you in the right direction. Are you with me this morning? Let us bow our heads. Father, we come and we, we glorify your name. We lift you up. We thank you for the liquid sunshine from last night and because that water will breathe life, God. We thank you, God, that this morning your sun is shining bright. We thank you, God, for the food on our tables. We thank you, God, 
for the clothing on our backs. We thank you most of all that you clothed us in our right mind. We've got a mind to praise God today. So we say thank you. Father, we continue to pray now for every family that's represented here. You have really put it on my heart this week that this thing is about family. Everything we're doing is for our future, for our family's future. So I say thank you. Now, God, as I prepare to break this bread of life with your people, anoint these lips of clay that I may rightly divide the word of truth with your people. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. I am uh, I'm learning how to deal with family when everything don't go the way you want it to go. I, I'm learning how to pray more fast and pray hard. I, I'm learning how to trust what the word says versus what I see. I wish I had a church. And so the Lord has brought me to Philippians, and he, 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 he's taken me down this journey of joy. It's something when you can have joy in spite of. Uh, Y'all going to pray with me? Things are going to keep on happening. Um, tragedies are going to happen. Um, deaths are going to happen. Life is going to happen. But it's how do you respond to what happens that matters. You don't have the power to stop them. I don't have the power to stop them. It's going to happen. Guess what? In how many ever years you've been living, you've seen them happen. Up today, down today. You see people's lives change in an instant. The Bible says that, 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 that the young man is going to faint. It's going to overwhelm him. And when you talk to young people, isn't it the simplest things that overwhelm them these days? It's, it's not that, that they don't believe that God could do something, but the maturity is not there in the spiritual realm, in the faith. The maturity is just not there. But we that are mature are called to help those who are still on milk. Isn't that the word? And some of us who should be on meat are not on meat. And that's where the word comes in. The word will strengthen you. The word will grow you. The word will keep you. Amen? So, that's my to this thing here this morning. He, Philippians chapter 1, starting at the first verse. I am looking so forward to this series. Paul and Timothy, I'm going to say, the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and the deacons. Now, there's a lot of people don't believe bishops should, can be in the Baptist church. This is the word right here. Didn't you just see that say bishops and deacons? Now, now if you're going to be scriptural, be scriptural. And we know certain denominations have certain traditions and that kind of thing. But I, I have to point out to you in the word what the word says. Verse 2. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now listen. This is a salutation. What I'm going to do. I'm just going to go through it as I go along so, so I don't have to do too much repeating. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, 
practical application, because this is all about growth. This series is all going to be all about our growth. When my mother was very ill, and she was having some mental issues, as well as some physical issues. And I had never dealt with mental illness. And a lot of us in our culture, we don't deal with it well. Matter of fact, we ignore it rather than getting professional help or whatever we may need. And I knew that it was something beyond what I had seen before. And, you know, sometimes things can get so bad till you don't even want to go in the house. Anybody going to pray with me? For whatever reason, whether you can handle it or you can't handle it or, or whatever, for whatever reason, the enemy is trying to get you to back off. And one day I was going to see mom and, and, and mama, I call her mama, I ain't calling her no mom. I was going to see mama. And um, I got to the door, and I had been praying and fasting and trusting God. And God said, you need to speak peace in this house before you go in this house. See, see you don't go into battle and then try to set a plan. Come on, somebody. For the battle. It's too late when you in the battle. To try to plan, y'all going to pray with me this morning, for the battle. So the Lord said, even before you get in the battle, even before you get in what you got to deal with, you need to start speaking some things that are going to strengthen you while you're in the battle. And so the Lord said, salutations and greetings, they are things to build us up in our most holy faith. They are the things that reiterate what is important to us, what will keep us. And here we see um, Paul writing to the church at Philippi, and his salutation is, grace be unto you and what? And peace. If you ever go in a meeting, speak that. No matter who it is, God will give you favor in that meeting. See, the Bible says God can turn the heart of the judge. Y'all can pray with me. And some judges' hearts need to be changed. And we have the weapons of our warfare to change the judge's heart. And so I went to my mother's house, and the Lord told me that. And I said, peace be in this house and all the inhabitants of this house. That's all I said. Went in there, went, went to bathe the mom, and kind of noticed a little change. And two days later, went back in there, and I kept it up. Two days later, went back in there. She was talking with a right mind. left out the room, went and found dad. I said, dad, you know something different about mom? He started laughing. He said, me and your mama sat up four hours last night and talked like we was old folks. God can change any situation. If we operate out of the word of God, God can change any situation. My mother lived three more months in her right mind. Y'all going to pray with me. Three more months in her right mind. That was priceless. No doctor could have done that. No psychologist could have done that. But I'm a living witness that God, upon my faith being exercised, and doing what his word said, he honored that. In the last six, three months of her life, she was in her right mind. God is awesome. 
Now, let's move on down because I got to get on out of here. Now, so when you see the salutation in the Bible, write them down. Make them a part of your everyday life. You don't, you don't have to, you don't have to be like a Bible thumper and that's all you coming around people speaking Elizabethan. No, you don't have to do that. But what I'm saying is, in your spirit, man, huh? Because the Bible says when you pray, go where? In your closet. You don't do stuff. We don't do stuff for show. We do stuff because we know. We don't do stuff for show. We do stuff because we know that God has ordained it. Verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now, here is where the power of the church comes in. Here is where uh, uh, that touching and agreeing comes in. You as believers, um, as saints of God, you have to understand that God has given everybody in the church to you on a common mission to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you not understand that preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ brings Jews together with Christians? Bring slave together with master. Y'all gonna pray? Isn't that the Bible? The free as well as the one that is bound are together on this mission. Nobody is better than anybody. From the pulpit to the door, we all have the ministry of reconciliation. That's the word of God. Now, he says, I thank my God. Listen. My God, upon every remembrance of you. That means when your name come up, Sister Ash, I thank God for you. When your name come up, Sister Barrett, I thank God for you. When your name come up, Deacon Jones, I thank God for you. Don't think the enemy not going to try to turn one against the other either because he knows this verse. That if we can love one another, we can overcome a multitude of sin. Y'all going to pray with me. Now, listen, in four, he says, always in every prayer of mine, for you, for you all, make a request with what? Joy. That's, that's our feature. This joy that I have. The joy that I have. We're going to dig deep into that joy in this series. This joy that I have. Now, he says that he prays, and he prays in every prayer, make a request with joy. In other words, he does not go into prayer defeated. He goes into prayer from a place of victory. That's the hard part for us to get. A lot of us wait till we beat up, beat down, discouraged before we even pray. No, when you at the height of your joy, you need to really be praying. Come on, somebody. And, and when your joy is sunk, you feel a heaviness, you need to pray. So Paul tells us that he makes requests for the saints with joy. Verse 5, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now. He's saying that everybody has a new birthday. Every one of us has a new born again day. That day when you gave your life Christ. The Bible said, old things, come on somebody, have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He said, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. From when you gave your life to Christ until now, you are a new creature. And he tells us that he has prayed for us. Now that we're in the fold, now 
that we're in the family, he prays with joy for us. Good God Almighty. Then, verse 6, he says, being confident of this very thing, that he which have done what, y'all? He which have begun what, y'all? A good work in you. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to get you back to your born again day. I'm trying to get you back to when people saw you and you had a glow on you and people began to say there's something different about you today. You not, I mean, I know you in the same body. Come on, somebody. But you don't have the same spirit occupying that body. I, I remember when I got saved. I, I remember when I called on the Lord and he heard my cry. I remember being able to, to, to spiritually discern some things that I had never spiritually discerned before. I remember when I could control my mouth. I, I remember when I had an ear to hear. I wish I had a church. What the Spirit is saying to the church. Why? Because the building is not the church. But when you give your life to Christ, <laughs> you become the church. And the Spirit will speak to you. The Spirit will lead you. The Spirit will guide you. I wish I had somebody this morning. God is trying to take you somewhere. He's trying to take you somewhere you've never been before. And what I like about God, it ain't never too late. He says, listen, listen in verse 6. He says, being confident. Remember the man had the son, and he was throwing himself in the fire, and he was cutting himself. And what did the man, the man told Jesus, I've been down here with your boys all night. They're supposed to be your boys. They're supposed to be effective. There's supposed to be some efficacy in whatever they're doing. And, and, and ain't nothing happening. And my boy throwing himself in the fire and cutting himself. And Jesus said, this kind. <laughs> you got another weapons of your warfare. He said, this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. Don't, don't blame my boys. They just ain't mature enough right now. They, they just don't know the right way to go right now. But after a while, by and by, they don't know the right way. You know why they don't know the right way? Because God has begun a good work in them. Say, he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus. The Bible tells us the man at the gate, Paul and a couple of other guys were coming in and man was begging for arms. Paul said, uh, money, I don't have none of. He said, but such as I have. He's trying to talk to the church. If you got faith, you can help somebody. If you got Jesus, you can help somebody. If you got the gospel, you can help somebody. Paul says, such as I have. I give unto you. Pick up your bed. Come on. God, you got to be confident that what he has begun in you, he will fulfill it till the end. I trust God today. Even when it gets hard, even when it gets difficult. It seems like whenever we make progress, something happens in the world. The devil is busy, y'all. The little girl got shot last week. It, 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 it gets complex. The devil, he, 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 a murky water. He murks up the water. He, it, it, nothing's going to be clear to us till we get with Jesus. They say, old saints say, you'll understand it all better. Come on, somebody. By and by. We look through glass darkly right now and, and, and we, we get the verdict on the cops and then we get the young lady the young lady's wielding a knife so 
right? He's trying to, they fight. Now, I always have a problem because they use lethal force for us, but for them, they always come out, they done killed 12 people. Ain't nobody got shot yet. So I got a problem with that. Don't think pastor don't have a problem with that. But then again, too, this girl got a knife, you know. What is the protocol? And that's what we got to get right. What is the protocol? Yes, you got a lot of options. What is the protocol? We don't understand the protocol. And are you applying the protocol equally in each neighborhood? I'm about to go, and I'm going to say this. Police the other night pulled um, a car over. Well, I was over at my other house, and I was coming out, getting ready to get in my truck to go to my house. And when I walk out my door, it's a car pulled in my yard. It's a police officer, a brother, with his head in the passenger side door, the door, both doors open, the driver's door and the passenger door. So when I come out, I don't know if I need to go forward, back up, or whatever, but it's still my yard. That's what's in my yard. So I'm like, what's going on? Sir, 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 this is how he's talking to me. Elevated it to stay out my business, sir. That's what I got out. Sir, sir, I'm doing a traffic stop here. I said, you in my yard. You're not on public property. This is private property. Sir, sir. I gave him about five more minutes. No, I didn't give him five more minutes. What happened was Neil pulled up, and he asked me, was everything all right from the street? Well, that's my son. I'm standing in the door. You in my yard. Lights flashing. People we don't know in our yard. So I said, um, well, he said he's doing a traffic stop. And um, just come on in the house. So Neil was like, so then the man starts saying, sir, sir, to me again. Like I can't talk in my own yard. So I said, man, you done lost your mind. You in my yard trying to be funny with me. You didn't tell me what happened. You're not telling me what's going on. And you're going to keep stirring me. Don't stir me no more. So he said, then it, it dawned on him that he needed to tell me what was going on in my yard. And he said, well, they, I was pulling them over, and they pulled in your yard. Well, why you didn't get them to back out of my yard? <laughs> so finally, he let them go. And he didn't call for backup, so I knew he was going to let them go because you know they're going to call for backup. He never called for backup. Finally, he let them go. But he didn't have the decency to come talk to me. He pulled off. And when you handle the community like that, that's when stuff get ugly. That's when we see police, and we're we not down with seeing the police. Because of the way the police treat us. They, on St. Simon's, he would have never let them stay in them people, y'all. Never. Fifteen minutes. And I didn't even tell him I was trying to move, but they had me blocked. But he was acting so, you know, I decided that conversation didn't even need to be had. And Neil told me to calm down. And I said, okay, I will. But he's still in my yard. Respect me enough. To talk to me like I'm somebody. But this joy that the Lord gave me. When, when he left, I didn't worry about it. I prayed about it. And the Lord said, it'll be all right. But if we're going to survive in this environment, even us older people can get caught up. And we, at some point, we're going to be tired of seeing them shoot our young people. We might flip, but if we got this word, this word helps the joy of the Lord to be our strength. 
It helps the joy of the Lord to lead us and guide us in these complex times. These are complex times. People are showing us one hand and throwing a rock with the other hand and putting it behind their back and saying, no, I didn't throw it. The only thing that's going to give you discernment for what we're going through is the word of God. And if God tells us he's begun a good work in us, that he's going to finish it, I believe God. I don't believe these little uh, uh, think setbacks that we may have today and we may have, I don't believe them. I believe God. So this morning I'm shouting. This morning I'm giving him praise because the joy that I had, I wish I had somebody. The world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. It was Jesus who died on Calvary, who came down off the cross, put in a borrowed tomb. It was Jesus who got up out of that tomb. It was Jesus who is the first fruit of the resurrection. That's who gives me my joy. So, Lord, I believe you for the church, for the saints, for all of us, that the good work that you begin in us, you're going to accomplish it even until the end. We stand on it today, God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some praise. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. This joy, this joy, let us stand as we open the doors of the church. There may be somebody here today. Experience or candidate from baptism. By the blood of yes, still running warm in your veins. If you haven't given Christ your life, now is the time. The new applicant came, you did your sin. Amen. Amen. Thank you, El Pastor. This joy. Announcement. Amen. We got a few announcements that we're going to make. Amen. Anybody? Participate in the food giveaway. How did that go yesterday? Went good? A lot of people? Amen. <coughs> to God be the glory. Amen. So glad to be here once again. I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Just get up out of your way and make these couple of quick announcements. Remember that they will be administering the uh, Moderna COVID-19 vaccine at the Riceboro Youth Center Pavilion here on Saturday, May the 1st from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So once again, they will be, this is, diverse, this is the Diversity Health Center, will be administering the uh, Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, the, this is a two-dose series, so if you already had the first, this will be your second dose. So just remember <coughs> that it's the second dose series. And once again, that's on Saturday, May the 1st at 10 a.m. at the Riceboro Youth Center Pavilion. And also, I'm going to quickly try to read through this here as quickly as possible for the Dorchester Improvement Association. Dear friends, the latter part of 2020 and early 2021 have been challenging for the entire world. We here at the Dorchester Academy have not been immune from the challenges. We have had to shut down the rental operations of our auditorium and close our museum. We did, however, continue with our dormitory renovations with the aid of SPLOTS funds. We have also made significant progress in the creation of exhibits that tells the story of the significant role of Dorchester that, uh, wrote that Dorchester played in the planning of the Birmingham campaign Project C and the operation of the citizenship school where the likes of Fannie Lou Hammer, Jesse Jackson, Fred Shuttleworth, and James Bevel attended with our walks fund and contributions from our sustaining partners. You are going to love it. I am excited about the prospects of your visit once the exhibits are completed. We have also contributed a <coughs> 30 by 40 foot storage building to reduce clutter in the dormitory to free up space for exhibits. For all these accomplishments, we have you to thank. Please support us by contributing and joining us at our 21st Walk to Dorchester on June 19th this year. We will begin as usual at 9 a.m. at the Bribe uh, Park here in Riceboro. We will 
courts can continue to abide by CDC guidelines set for COVID-19. Uh, once again, that's at Walter Dorchester, June 19th, uh, 6 a.m., starting down to Briarberry, Briar Bay <laughs> Park here in Riceboro. As always, we are a 501c3 organization, so your contributions are tax deductible. Uh, we welcome any new supporters and thank always for your continued support. William T. Austin, president uh, of the Dorchester Recruitment Association. And there, are, there is a sign-in uh, list here, which I will put right in front of the podium. And that's your announcements. What was that date? Uh, June 19th. 6 a.m. That's Juneteenth. We thank God for, and we definitely thank you for the announcements, and we thank, we thank God for our invite to be able to share and speak and allow that as well. We thank God for all that's been taking place here. Let us continue to be prayerful for our families, for the sick, the shut-in, as well as the downtrodden. Let us lift them up. Amen. As you have seen, um, the land has been cleared. Thank God for that and uh, for continuing to work on the building process of streets and moving forward for that. And so we just thank you. We just thank you. Amen. Let us all stand. Yes. God is a good God. It's good to see all of you. God is. Let us find there. Father, we come and we thank you for this worship experience. We ask now, God, that you continue to touch everything that we touch and that victory be ours in Christ Jesus. We thank you for what has transpired, what has taken place today. We pray that it is pleasing in your ears and a sweet savor in your nostrils. We glorify you this day. We bind the enemy and we loose your anointing right now in the name of Jesus. Now unto him who is able to present us faultless before his divine presence, the all-wise God our Father, in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Be blessed, saints of God.